All right, everybody. Good evening. This is Kamate. I am broadcasting from within the Square Enix building in Los Angeles. I'm here with the rest of the community members. Uh, we got Bayonne here. Hey, everybody. How's it going? And Rukiri. Hey, yeah. And Okiput. Hey, guys. Hopefully you guys heard a little bit of their, their voice. Uh, does it sound okay? We're going to be taking a look at a bunch of Adeline stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in. All right. So here we are in East Adeline, and we're right in front of the castle. Try to get a better view here by moving out. Can't go in there, it's a gate blocking our way. But just to give you guys a little bit of a feel for what are you doing, camera thing? Okay. So we're going to start just by giving you guys a, a good overview of the town of Adeline itself. Uh, going to go on a short little tour, so if you want to walk with me, you can kind of take a look at all these NPCs too along the way. You notice their gear, their names. This guy, Adel Fetter, is just walking around, strutting his really cool equipment. So as we run, note the size of the zone too, it's pretty big. And you could also see some of those waypoints, which I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with uh, doing those precursor quests. And again, if I'm uh, if anything's wrong with the volume or uh, video wise, just let me know. I'll try to solve the issues. So just pop up in chat, let me know. Go down this super steep hill. Go take a look at some of the key features of East Adelaide. So walking down from the castle, we're gonna go to the main section over here. Huge statue. Gigantic statue of Altana with a pretty cool waterfall in the background. Definitely a good sight to see when you guys first arrive here. Get a little bit closer to the waterfall too. Sweet. Loop around, there's another waypoint. Some old people playing checkers. No, I don't know what they do. Coming around this way. Show off this interesting looking building. Right here, circular thing right here is a library. So what kind of books and what exactly is inside this library is a mystery which you guys can discover for yourselves when you start doing the storyline and come to Adeline. So look forward to that. Going past this library, we have the residential area. And of course, the auction house, which is linked up to the major auction house that you guys all use every day. So let's head back to that center section. And we're going to go over to West Adeline. Some more waypoints. It is a pretty big town. So you can kind of get a feel of 
the fastest turn around here. It takes quite a bit of a walk to get to the castle. And a nice view of this little bridge here. I'll try to get to the edge here so you can see. Wonder what that is in the distance. And let's go ahead and zone to West Island. Western Island. I am a big fan of this music. It is pretty awesome. So heading up this way, we're gonna go to the main center section. Nice little square with a fountain. Seems like this area here would be something ideal for uh, meeting up with fellow adventurers to go on your quests and missions. Another waypoint. So you can see that those waypoints are really, really everywhere scattered out through these towns. See that gate in the distance that leads out to the first field area. We'll actually be going out there in just a bit, but before we do so, we're gonna hang a left here. To see none other than another auction house. So again, linked up with the main auction house. And before we go outside, this building right in front of us is the Pioneer Coalition uh, building. So, I'm sure you guys probably had noticed uh, as I was running around, you could see these little signs. So these are all for the different coalitions of Adeline. Uh, there's six. This one is the Pioneer Coalition, like I mentioned. So let's take a look inside. So these guys here, these guys here, um, you can actually get your pioneer assignments and stuff like that. And uh, the, the whole idea of this pioneer coalition is uh, colonization. So basically, you have Adeline uh, or uh, the whole Ubuka continent that's uh, it's pretty much uncharted. So by undertaking these assignments and actually going out pioneering and colonizing, you're actually going to start breaking in, in this, into this land. And you could do this by, you know, undertaking assignments from different coalitions. And by actually completing these assignments, you'll get certain bonuses, uh, certain things to help you out uh, to, to move throughout these lands and uh, help you with your pioneering endeavors. And we will be showing quite a bit of the colonization aspect when we head outside. join up with the rest of the community. Yay! Alright, so here they are. They're in front of this frontier station. This frontier station, you know, it's kind of like an OP, an outpost. Um, it's kind of your forefront of the pioneering. Uh, by actually 
undertaking these colonization assignments and stuff like that, you can start to, to break into this land, like I said. And by doing that, you can actually start setting up these outposts called uh, bivouacs. A word that I had to look up how to pronounce for the stream. <laughs> and by doing that, it'll give you certain bonuses, such as uh, making it easier to progress through the areas. Uh, you can, you know, gather supplies better uh, and other kind of boons for, for you and your party. So here's the rest of the community. Uh, I have them on a couple different jobs. Uh, Bayonne is going to be our Geomancer today. Yes. Okipuit is going to be our Rune Fencer. And we have the lovely Rukiri on Dragoon. So I'm sure that you guys have seen, you know, the, the Rune Fencer and Geomancer armor a lot of times on the website, uh, in previous screenshots, even at Vanifest. So I thought today would be a pretty good opportunity to introduce and show off some of the new equipment that you could find in Adelin. So these are three of the, the new sets that you can get. So we have our heavier armor, our mage-like armor, and our mid to light armor. And like I was saying about the colonization stuff too, uh, just really quickly, is that uh, I'm going to pull up the, the map here. So you can see that there's a colonization rate. So by actually progressing through these pioneering collision stuff and also taking on uh, these things known as reeds, which we'll get into in just a little bit, you'll actually be able to increase that colonization rate. And by doing that, that will unlock certain bonuses for you and give you certain opportunities to, to expand uh, your influence in these regions. So let's go ahead and get into some of the battle aspects. So if Okipuri, if you could lead us on, we're gonna go fight some stuff and take a look at Geomancer. Join up with the party. Okipuit has completely disappeared into the wilderness. And Okiri is trying behind, but that's okay. Like I said, we're going to be taking a look at what Geomancer is capable of right now. So Geomancer, as you can imagine, has their own unique uh, magic known as Geomancy. And these are either enfeebling or enhancement type spells. And there's two different kinds. Uh, uh, first, actually, they do stack with rolls, uh, magic, and bard songs, so it's pretty beneficial. Uh, so there's two kinds. I'm sure you might have read about it on the official site, but there are uh, indie spells and geo spells. So indie spells are actually the ones that will be cast on yourself and create this bubble. So Bayon, why don't you go ahead and use uh, an indie, indie spell, Indie Fury. See the size of the bubble. So that whole sphere has the effect of uh, gives the party some attack bonuses. And as long as your party members are inside of that sphere, they're gonna be able to get that bonus. And this sphere moves with Bayon. It moves with the Geomancer, so you can move back and forth between different party members. On the other hand, we have the other kind of spell, the Geo spell, and these Geo spells actually uh, set in a static spot by placing what's known as a Rule Pop. So go ahead and put down, uh, let's do an Enfeeble for this guy, let's put down a Geo Paralysis Rule Pop.
And this is pretty much centered around the little pond itself, so it has its own little sphere. You kind of see the borders there, right around there. So Bayon is free to move around uh, from that Geo spell. He doesn't have to stay near it. So everything inside of that bubble has a chance of getting paralyzed. And all the effects, uh, the bonus, either the enfeebles or the enhancements, are dependent on uh, Geomancy's skill, and as well as, uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed, him uh, shaking his bell. So the bell is kind of like a, a bard instrument. Uh, you can put it in your, your ranged slot, and it has its skill of its own. So the combination of those two skills will dictate just how strong that effect is. So you can only have one little pawn active at a time. So let's get rid of this one with uh, an ability called Full Circle. It'll kind of clear that guy out so you can put another one down. And this one this guy. Take a look. So let's go the opposite route this time. Let's go, um, let's give a an enfeebling Indie. So why don't you put on Indie Slow? Chicken's bill. So he's gonna have to get a little bit closer to you, but make sure that the monsters are inside that sphere for the slow effect to take place. And you can also drop a uh, let's drop a beneficial Lulu Pond down. So let's do uh, Geo uh, Refresh. It gives Poki Puet some MP. And a lot of the abilities that uh, Geomancer has actually revolves around uh, this Lua Pond. So if you take a look, I'm targeting the Lua Pond right now, you'll actually notice that it does have HP. And this will slowly decrease over time. Uh, it can also take damage from uh, AoE type spells. So you gotta be careful when you put them down not to actually you know, have it be in the range of uh, really damaging AoE because it could just wipe that out. So, it's the Geomancer's job to also take care of these. Uh, luckily, they're armed with a couple good abilities. Uh, one of them will actually give it light. Kind of like giving your uh, Wyvern HP. And this one's called uh, Life Cycle. So you'll notice... Bam uses Life Cycle. Go up. And this does take HP from you and give it to your Rubicon. One other really interesting ability that uh, Geomancer gets, and again plays with the whole Lil' Pun idea, uh, and it's a trade-off, um, it's called Ecliptic Attrition, and this will actually increase the effects of your Geomancy spells, but uh, increase the rate in which that HP goes down. So there it goes. So effects of HP consumption really increase. So Geomancer are definitely a pretty technical job, a lot of moving around, helping out people, debuffing enemies. We'll definitely keep you busy. Alright. Good job. Alright, so let's move on and take a look at some other enemies. Still going over uh, a couple things about Geomancer. Okay, do you want to lead the way to show off some of the new Chapuli monsters? Yeah, man, these are pretty cute. I don't want to kill them myself either. <laughs> Poor guys. <laughs> so heading deeper into the jungle. Also, one thing to note too is when uh, the Geomancer does have an indie spell on that is uh, an enfeebling based one, 
it's only gonna affect the monsters that you have uh, hate with. So Bayon could be moving around here uh, with that sphere around him and not actually, uh, you know, aggro these guys. Like there's a, another monster here, but Loki put it on to just try to carefully pull the Chapuli, try to bring it back towards the uh, this area over here. Our friend, Mr. Drippy, has decided to uh, join the party. <laughs> no! <laughs> Alright, so, uh, the other really cool thing about Geomancer is they, they come equipped with a, a new type of elemental magic, the, the raw type magic. So if you're familiar with uh, the jaw, type magic. It's, it's kind of similar, but this raw magic actually targets around yourself, so as opposed to casting it on the monster and having the AoE fall based on where that location is, uh, it really depends on where, where you are. So, Bam, you want to go ahead and try out some of these new raw spells? Thundara 2. So that's pretty much Geomancer in a nutshell. I uh, definitely urge you guys to try it out when the game releases and explore the job for yourself. Uh, there's a lot of other abilities and fun facts for Geomancer, but we'll leave the discovery up to you guys. So let's head on over. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the, the reeves that we uh, had posted on the official site not too long ago. So there's actually three kinds of reeves. There's uh, lair reeves, colonization reeves, and wild keeper reeves. Uh, we're going to take a look at two of those today. Uh, first starting out with uh, lair reeves. So let's head over to the Yase hunting grounds. So if you look on, just you know, there's there are a lot of bugs in this forest. <laughs> and Kiri is right, and I do not like big, gigantic bugs. Which is why we're gonna crush these bugs later. Okay, put it. Just can't wait to start this lair. <laughs> so let's head in. Um, you'll notice that we kind of just head in and automatically get these tags. We didn't have to sign up or do anything like that. So. Similar to the campaign symbol, uh, these things are really easy to join. There's no need to, uh, you know, talk to anybody, do anything. You can just jump in. You don't need to be in a party. Just run in, and you can start these. However, uh, if you do run in and you decide you want to run out right away because you're scared or there's too many monsters, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, you're actually going to get a penalty. So make sure that when you run into these that you're, you're set in intent to finish it to completion. If not, you won't be able to uh, do a read again for another 10 minutes. Mm. 
And these Lair Reeves are just, as it kind of says in the name, uh, the objective is to destroy these monsters' lairs. So in this case, we saw the, the Wasp Nest. So basically by destroying that, we can complete this. And complete the Reeves. Uh, depending on the areas, there's different kinds. Whether it's like uh, a rock pile or a uh, different kind of, you know, depending on what kind of monster it is, that lair or, or nest or whatever you want to call it is going to be a little bit different. And similar to campaign, uh, basically rewards are contingent upon your participation in this battle. So as soon as you join, the evaluation starts, um, depending, you know, attacking, helping out the party, whether it cures and all that stuff, um, that participation is going to go up. And you can get rewards, uh, XP rewards, as well as... So, I uh, use a lot from this. So, I was telling you, so you can get uh, XP rewards as well as Bailed, which is kind of think of it like your, your campaign points or uh, uh, conquest points type of thing. So, pretty much by destroying that wasp, wasp nest, uh, we could end this, but can think that. If you start attacking the nest, the bees are going to get quite angry, so they're all going to start attacking them. So let's start focusing them down. Break it! Good job. Good job, starting the mess. Okay, so that's pretty much Layer Reeves in a nutshell. So let's go take a look at a, a different kind of Reeve, uh, Colonization Reeves. So let's head on over to a different area. Taking a look at the chat really quick, there's a question as to what the pronunciation of Reeves is. I say Reeves. I'm gonna go with Reeves, I'm sticking to that. <laughs> and don't ask me to pronounce the name of this zone either. Alright. So, Okipu, why don't you go ahead and lead the way? So here we are, confronted with a big body of water that seems like we cannot cross. But luckily it looks like there is this huge palm tree that's hanging over the water, and it seems like it's attackable. So as we hop in here, similar to our layer reed, uh, we get that little sword status. So we could just go out and uh, start attacking that palm, but I'm pretty sure that these toads and crabs will have none of that. So let's start by attacking some of these guys.
clear this crabby toad and then just uh, try to focus down that tree. But yeah, go ahead and uh, start attacking that tree. You gotta cross this water. So by completing more and more of these uh, colonization reefs, you're actually going to be able to also, you know, increase that colonization rate that I showed you on the on, on the map. And by doing that, it will open up pathways and, and give you more uh, influence in those areas to set up those kind of outpost type things and whatnot. Hmm. And it seems like they're not really damaging these guys too much. So you actually need to acquire these survival skills in order to uh, make a path for all these things. And there's different ones. There's different. There's trees. There might be rocks in the way, or a bunch of vines tangled up that you need to get past. And by acquiring these survival skills, uh, you can actually break past them and, and open up that way. So yeah, let's go ahead and magically break the tree. Pretty neat, so it falls in the water, opening up a pathway. Enabling us to get to the other side safe. Now like I said, there's there's a lot of different kinds of these, so they just have to be on the lookout. And to go with it are those survival skills. So, survival skills, how you get them is a mystery, which again, you guys should discover for yourselves when you get the game and try it out. So now let's head on to a, another new area, more and more basalt fields, where we can take a look at Rune Fencer. So this is Okikuit's moment of glory, his time to shine and show off what Rune Fencer is all about. So Okikuit, why don't you go ahead and buff up? Ukira, you have a moment of glory. Your armor looks cool. You can jump on these guys. <laughs> and foil, which is a nice, unique rune fencer spell. I'll leave it as a mystery for you guys to discover what that is. Maybe pull it back just a little bit more so we don't get more of these Mata Mata guys. That's, that's good. That's good. Not too far. Bayon loves these guys because every time he tries to cast spells, he gets blasted out of the way. Alright, so Rune Fencer, as we've mentioned before, is our new tank job. And their real specialty lies with their uh, ability to harness the power of these runes. So if you're taking notice, uh, Okipuit's been using Sulpur, which is one of the many runes that you can choose from using the rune enchantment ability. 
And these things are based on elements, and they'll give you two different effects um, based on the element. It will give you an end spell type effect, as well as uh, elemental resistance. So Solper, the one he's using here, uh, gives him an end thunder-like effect. Now he's using something else. Sopor does give an end thunder effect and uh, increases your water resistance. You can kind of think of it like uh, like Dancer. By using these, you can save them up, kind of like finishing these. So that way you can use them uh, with other abilities. So let's take a look at what they can be used for. Uh, there's actually two different types of things you can do with runes once they're saved up. Uh, you have your offensive type ability, which is called Effusion. And there's a couple of different things that you can use there. And you have a defensive version, which is called Ward. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of the Effusion ones. So once you save up your Soul Core, which it seems like he has, let's take a look at Lunge, which is a nice damaging attack. Save up a couple more, so we can use the, another effusion called Gambit, and Gambit will actually reduce the enemy's uh, elemental defense. You want to pull another one so we can show off some of the, the ward abilities. I like these turtles, I don't know why. They remind me of the crazy mutant. Crazed ones from King of Movie Turtles. These names I forgot. So we can put saving up those runes again. Using an ability one for all. Giving the party members a magic shield. I think we saved up a good amount of runes. So why don't you go ahead and show them Valiance. And this reduces damage taken from certain elemental magic spells, of course, depending on which runes you're using, which elemental runes. Save up those runes again. He's just about good to go to show Lumet. And this is going to enable the Rune Fencer to absorb elemental damage. Not too much elemental damage coming from this guy just now, but... Always good to be prepared.
So again, basically Rune Fencer in a nutshell. Uh, you can discover all the other uh, neat stuff about the job when you log in and play. Good job, Bucky Put. Yeah. All right, and let's head to our final destination. Diwa? Why are we here? <laughs> so for many of you, I'm sure you have some nostalgia of this area leveling up here when Aragon, uh, Aragon released. I know I spent countless hours leveling up various jobs in this area here. But why are we here? So I have a cool surprise. It's the, it's the music box adventures so some of you may have already seen the announcement but uh, if you do pre-order the game uh, you will get a five track digital soundtrack music box adventures uh, the one that you just heard was of course uh, whispers of the gods which is the, the track of this zone that we're in currently pretty cool stuff so I urge you guys to go ahead and put pre-order secrets of adeline and also, I have some cool stuff to model for you. Our store. <laughs> From our store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, by purchasing the Ultimate Collection Seekers Edition. You'll be able to get the, these two items, the Destroy Bray and as well as the Chuggable shirt. Uh, if you're curious about what stats are on these, uh, we did release the topics on Play Online. So you can go over there and check out the stats for yourself. Definitely pick it up. They're cool stuff. Bayon dancing around, showing the back. Show the back again. He's got cool eggs. Yeah, Chuggable egg. Better. Blue Steel, Magnum. You're just standing there. They're all the same look. <laughs> Good stuff. So make sure next week, 26th, it's for, for sale. Pre-order now. And uh, March 27th, servers will come up and you guys will all have access to Adeline. So hope we guys see you in game. Uh, definitely check it out. It's going to be awesome. New zones, new storyline, two brand new jobs, lots of stuff to do. So definitely don't miss out. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know I'm excited. The rest of the uh, community team's excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's been, uh, been a little bit since our last expansion, so definitely some good content on the way. Right. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. You guys want to get a group shot in here? Want to come up? No? Sure. <laughs> we'll bring the whole community team over to say hi. Uh, <laughs> wheeling, wheeling over here. Yay! Oh, uh, that was 
this is kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, camera's here. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for uh, those on the East Coast set. I know it is a work night or a school night. Uh, you guys stayed up a little late to check out the stream. So thanks for coming out. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, let us know. Uh, there might be other opportunities to do this in the future, uh, whether it's you know showing off new stuff or just having fun. So definitely leave your feedback on the forums, and uh, we will catch you next time. Catch you guys later. <laughs>